Hi, Hi. Mr. Fine, thank you for... It's Rick, not Rick? Mr. Fine. Oh, Mr. Mr. Fine, Fine's okay. my dad, but okay. that's okay. <laughs> okay, here we are at Meyer Orthopedic Sports Medicine with another success story. My name is Rosanna Jeanette, and I'm the nurse here to tell you and witness another success story with somebody who underwent uh, the treatments here, and uh, we will talk about how your symptoms started and sure. what kind of symptoms you were having and how you found out about Dr. Meyer and all that good stuff. Sure. I don't know if you want me to just go ahead and just start from the beginning, but yeah. I started uh, working out in 1999. I hired a personal trainer, and throughout those years, I've done some heavyweights, some lightweights, whatever, but I started developing some shoulder issues. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, um, certain ranges of motion would cause pain for me, mm -hmm. and either lifting weights, and then all of a sudden started progressing into normal everyday activities like taking a shower, trying to reach my hand above my head, or so was it both of your shoulders? It started with you know it was not both shoulders at the same mm -hmm. time. It started with the left shoulder first, mm -hmm. and so I saw a sports medicine doctor mm -hmm. who came referred by somebody else and went to see him and did some physical therapy, and then we did an MRI or. I think we did an MRI, we did some x-rays or whatever the case may be, and mm -hmm. it turned out I had uh, a small little tears in my supraspinatus tendon mm -hmm. in, in my left shoulder. So after some therapy and it didn't really heal itself, he decided, you know what, why don't we do a procedure called PRP. Mm -hmm. So I did the PRP and I gotta tell you, it cleared my problem up right away. I had no pain whatsoever. And maybe a year and a half to two years later, it started to come back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I started developing something in my right shoulder as well. So he, Were you continually, uh, were you still going to do uh, exercises? I, I didn't really time? do any type of physical therapy after mm -hmm. that point. I sort of, you no, know. No, but you continue doing your exercises Oh, I continue, gym? always continue at the gym. I mean, I took the proper time off, mm -hmm. you know, following the PRP procedure. You know, I think I had two weeks off and then I went into physical therapy. So I followed the doctor's orders and whatever he wanted me to do and I did physical therapy for about three weeks or four mm -hmm. weeks following the PRP mm -hmm. procedure and then pretty much the pain had gone away. Well, let's talk a little bit about your pain. What yeah. pain level were you having back then? I'm gonna say probably before the proceed before PRP. Yeah. Probably seven ish oh, okay. in that so range. That's pretty, pretty yeah. strong. Were you taking pain medication? No, that I didn't take any pain meds at all. Not even Advil or ibuprofen? Yeah, I'm not really a big believer in those mm -hmm. that they, and I didn't really want to have to be able to take medicine all the time to control the pain. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, this PRP procedure would be sort of the next step mm -hmm. in, in so getting tell it Tell me about the pain. How did it affect your life? I mean, did you start, it, it, was it like, debilitating? Were you starting to feel constricted? Were you? Yeah, I mean, listen, I have a pretty high threshold of pain, mm -hmm. so it was an annoyance to me. Mm -hmm. And it was frustrating to me because it would limit the types of exercises that I could do at the gym, mm -hmm. and therefore I don't believe that I was getting the full benefit of my workouts. So mm -hmm. in, in everyday life, you know, if I, you know, let's say, you know, one of my right shoulder started bothering me, I would reach behind the seat to get mm -hmm. something, I would have pain. Or mm -hmm. sometimes I couldn't lift my arm over my shoulder, then, over my mm -hmm. head. And then you start compensating in other ways, you know? Correct. And then you start using other muscles and then Correct. you're using others and then you start having other problems in other body parts. Yeah. Were you experiencing any of this? I didn't really have any types of back issues or anything. I mean, I had some mm -hmm. shoulder trap muscle, neck problems, whatever. Um, I have a private masseuse that I see once every couple of weeks and mm -hmm. she would work on me and just nothing ever seemed to make the situation mm -hmm. right and it progressively came back in the right shoulder and started developing in the left shoulder and so then that doctor recommended perhaps doing some cortisone injections. Mm, ouch. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, listen, I, uh, mm -hmm. it worked. Um, Temporarily. Yeah. Correct, and maybe I got two, three, four months worth of relief. Mm -hmm. And he, it wasn't straight cortisone, he had sort of, he called it a cocktail. Mm -hmm. So, and that allowed him to do the injections more frequently because obviously doing straight cortisone mm -hmm. can cause damage. Yes. And irreversible yeah. damage. So by not using as much cortisone, mm -hmm. the steroid in there, then he would be able to inject more frequently. Mm -hmm. So I sort of got maybe three, four, five months worth of you know, relief. How many relief. injection therapy did you have with steroids? Over a course of two years, you know, I used to go in once every six months. Mm -hmm. 
then it got to be once every like four months mm -hmm. and then when it went when I started getting developing the pain like probably after 45 days mm -hmm. I knew it wasn't working. Yeah, you were just so... Oh. And so he didn't really, like, offer to do anything else. Like, I would have thought the next step would be, well, let's see if there's some type of internal problem. You know, mm -hmm. let's get an MRI or MRI with contrast or arthrogram or something like that mm -hmm. to see what's going on in both the shoulders. And he never really... Never pushed advised, Never really that. advised me to go and do that. It seemed like he didn't really have time. He had a very busy sports mm -hmm. medicine practice. He's not a surgeon. And so I started to get frustrated. You know, I'm an attorney and I have a client that needs a second opinion. And so a friend of mine told me to come to Dr. Meyer's office because he's really good. And mm -hmm. so during the uh, session when I was with my client, I started reading some literature on his, on one of his, in his exam rooms. And mm -hmm. one of them had to do with uh, this, um, um, stem cell research mm -hmm. and stem cell procedure and I started reading it and MSC mesenchymal stem cells yeah and it. I you know <clears throat> skeptical of course you know mm -hmm. um, so I decided what had you heard about the stem cell process before before you came here zero mm -hmm. nothing I, I knew nothing about it at all I, I take that back someone I knew had it done um, I think he was having some hip problems, mm -hmm. and his stem cell was taken through liposuction, through mm. fat, mm -hmm. and apparently he was on the wrong medication at the time he had the stem cells done, so it really didn't mm -hmm. have the full effect that it was supposed to have had. So that's when I first heard about it. Mm -hmm. and well, then, you know, uh, stem cells, or MSC, uh, uh, mesenchymal stem cells, they're produced by the skeletal. Uh, usually, most, most of them are produced in the middle part of the body, like around the hip area. Mm -hmm. But they're also produced by fat. And, uh, but the highest concentration is around the hip area, so that's why we like to gotcha. go in, in, in the bone marrow aspirate. Um, how was that procedure for you? The actual procedure mm -hmm. of having with Dr. Meyer? Mm -hmm. Well, you were there. <laughs> <laughs> With that nitrous, nitrous oxide. That's some crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, well, I will want to talk a little bit about the yeah. nitrous oxide that we um, offer here. Uh, first of all, we, we uh, provide you with the Ativan, which is sort of like a, a, a medication to help calm the anxiety yeah. uh, about an hour before the procedure. But then during the procedure itself, we like to take the edge off. So oh, yeah. One of <laughs> yeah. It took the edge off, all right. Yeah. It's not like intubation or anything like that. No. We just give a little, uh, offer a little nitrous oxide, which is very safe. Yes. Um, and uh, Trust me, I was very skeptical about it. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and, you know, and just, just breathe normally and everything is nice, all good. Nice, slow, deep breaths. And the interesting thing was, is that, you know, I think after the first part of the procedure, I said, is it possible I could pass out from doing this stuff? He goes, no, it's 50% oxygen and 50% nitrous. I go, so I can just breathe normally? He goes, yeah, breathe normally, it's no problem. And then we were having a laughing attack. And then after that, I was totally fine because I, cause I was very worried about just passing out. Yeah. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the procedure itself, it was, uh, you know, I wasn't in any pain mm -hmm. at all. I mean, the nitrous sort of knocked that out and mm -hmm. the Ativan, whatever I had beforehand, I mean, there was pressure. Right, mm -hmm. and I felt right, and we do give a local anesthetic. Yes. Dr. Meyer does uh, mark his um, the areas that he's going to go in, and he does it with an ultrasound. He makes sure that he's going in the right area. Then he lo puts a local anesthetic, and then gives it about 15 minutes to work. So he leaves the room. Then during that time, you're relaxing, and then when he comes back, everything is numb. He, he double checks to make sure that yeah. everything is working and everything is numb. And then we, we start with the nitrous, um, yeah. nitrous oxide. And he's very is. conscious about those things. He wanted to make sure that, you know, even throughout the entire procedure, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Mm -hmm. Do you feeling any pain? You know, if you need me to stop, I'll stop. And again, I have a high threshold of pain, so none of that stuff bothered me. And I wasn't in any pain throughout you the procedure were at all. I, I mean, remember. Well, you were very calm. You have very, <laughs> you have very nice calming effect. Thank well, you. <laughs> well, thank you. It's, yes. uh, it's, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah it I was. Remember and that. so maybe some pressure, you know, when mm -hmm. they're extracting the the. Uh, and if there is a pressure, uh, you can vocalize it, and then he'll slow it down. Correct. If you're feeling any Absolutely. any discomfort. Right. You know, Slowly do own, yeah. but surely. I mean, you know, the first couple weeks, not I didn't see any type of improvement whatsoever. 
But then during like the third week and uh, the fourth week, and things got a little bit easier to do. And mm -hmm. again, I, n I was not at the gym. I didn't work out. We didn't do any physical therapy. I just let the stem cells do their job. And I think I had a follow-up mm -hmm. appointment with him, I think eight weeks after the procedure. And that's when I asked him, can I start doing some physical therapy and maybe, you know, working mm -hmm. out a little bit? And he said, yeah, you can slowly start moving yourself back into it. And, you know, I couldn't even touch his shoulder without mm -hmm. any type of pain. Mm. And now I have no problems whatsoever doing that. I have no problems in the shower. Um, now you're dancing, huh? Well, I don't know about dancing in the shower, but yeah, I mean, but yeah, all the little things that I had problems with before, mm -hmm. they have gone away. So if I'm going to say that my pain scale was sort of like an eight, nine, mm -hmm. and again, it's not a pain that I, it's with me all the time, right? Mm -hmm. It's not every minute and every second of every day. It's certain movements with the mm -hmm. arm, your internal rotation, external rotation. And Those, boy, it just it stops you right It there. stops you right away from doing it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but doing those movements now, you know, where it used to be an eight, nine, it's now a three, four. And I'm a only- Tolerable. Yes. And you're gonna restore your function. Yes, mm -hmm. and you know, having the physical therapy now and doing exercises and doing, and very important to do your home exercises as mm -hmm. well. I mean, people think it's a joke, but it's not really a joke. If they tell you to do certain home exercises, if you invest the time to make sure you do those home exercises, you will see the benefit of that. There's absolutely no question mm -hmm. about it. And I want to do this the right way. I mm -hmm. didn't want to cut any corners. I followed his directions mm -hmm. exactly what he wanted me to do. A few deep breaths and being patient. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't be happier at this stage knowing that I still have another, I believe, four to five months of... Mm -hmm. Continuous... Growth. Yeah, yes. Right. Regeneration. It, right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean... Um, and, and with over time, it should decrease the inflammation, and, and inflammation is the cause of the pain sometimes, you know, right. most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, absolutely. It, it, don't be skeptical. I, you just need to just trust mm -hmm. Dr. Meyer. He mm -hmm. knows what he's doing. He has terrific bedside manner. He's um, very centered, very present. Yeah, I mm -hmm. just, you feel very comfortable with him. I just feel at ease. It's like, you, you, there's no pressure. There's, you know, mm -hmm. I've been to other doctor's offices and, oh, yeah, surgery, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're you ready know, to cut. Right, yeah, you're not, no, it, he's not that's like not that, that way. He yeah. just wants you to be better and feel better. Yes. And, and he's so careful because I've, I've also seen when he um, extracts, when he does harvest the, the blood for the, um, the centrifugation process, yeah. he's so precise and he, he has like a recipe for each individual patient and he draws it up and then he has a, like a gycometer or something that measures your stem cells and he looks at the graphs. So he's into, you know, the analysis, the quantitative analysis and he really puts a lot of effort and pre he's such a presence of mind. Well, and I remember just, during the procedure, he came back into the room after he extracted everything mm -hmm. and told me, oh my God, your, stem, your, your, your cocktail is so, you have so much good stuff in there. The he numbers goes, went way He goes, I, I, can't wait, I can't wait for you to get your, oh, yeah. he gets so me to inject it into you. I'm like, guy. okay, that's such a scientist. Yeah. <laughs> Not an evil that. scientist. He's, a really, he's one of the good scientists. Yeah. But yeah, it was, mm -hmm. yeah, he was very excited about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, I, four, I'm only four months in and this is... Uh, I couldn't be happier. Okay. Well, I thank you so much oh, for sharing your pleasure. wonderful story yeah. and for taking the time to come here and, and let others learn about other options, yeah. you know, so that they don't experience as yeah. much pain and, and they can deal with their pain and with the available treatments where you can use your own body to regenerate. Exactly. Anyway, I thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Mr. Fine. Oh, yeah, Mr. Fine. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Bye.